Um, for someone who, who might not know, uh, when someone majors in neuroscience, what does that mean? So that's a really good question. Um, it can mean a lot of things. Neuroscience is really interdisciplinary, and that means you can be an engineer and study neuroscience, but overall, it's the study of the brain and the central nervous system, and it's understanding how the brain works, how the brain functions, how it functions in normal um, circumstances, and also in disease. So what, uh, what sparked this curiosity in neuroscience for you? Um, so I started off loving science just in general um, since I was a kid, um, and I had the opportunity to work in a neuroscience lab at the University of Florida where I was studying therapeutics for stroke, and I think there really sparked my curiosity in the world of neuroscience, and from that time on, I spent three years in that lab at the University of Florida um, studying. I published three papers with that group. And I decided after finishing my tenure in that lab that I wanted to get a PhD in neuroscience. I really wanted to dive more into that world and tackle some of these difficult questions. So the my my dad is a neurologist actually. Oh, so cool. yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and say I know a lot about the human brain, um, but I know enough to know that it's 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 very complicated and it takes yes. a specific person with kind of a specific temperament and specific interests to really have an interest in the central nervous system. So for you, what about this re really appealed to you and what about it kind of drew you in as opposed to another kind of science? So all of what you said is exactly. Um, honestly, it, I'm really drawn to a challenge and I really loved how complex the brain is and how intricate the brain is. Like there's specific things that need to work together for proper development. And if proper development doesn't happen, then there's issues down in adulthood. So I, I think a lot of um, my passion comes from wanting to be challenged and wanting to really um, dive into that world. You mentioned that you, know, you went to school in mm -hmm. Gainesville, like that was your first, um, you know, that's where you did your undergrad. Um, yes. Before that, you lived in Jamaica. Why don't you tell me about uh, growing up in, in Jamaica and your, your upbringing there? Yes, of course. So Jamaica is a beautiful little island in the Caribbean. Um, it is surrounded by beautiful waters and beautiful people. And I lived the first 14 years of my life in Jamaica um, with my extended family and my parents. And um, I loved it. I loved Jamaica. It was beautiful. and. One of the things that um, I dearly miss about Jamaica is probably the food. Uh, but to get back to my education, um, I went to St. Andrew Preparatory School um, in the Kingston. I then went to Immaculate Conception High School where I basically developed my um, science and learned more about science. And that's where I was introduced to the violin as well. Um, in Jamaica, I played violin starting when I was about 11 and I continue to do that, I still do to this day. Um, but yeah, I think one of the big things that really stands out to me is that um, science was actually, cre my love for science was created there. Um, I had a really amazing teacher, um, Mrs. Ivy, um, at St. Andrew Preparatory and I remember her giving us an assignment to create a solar system. And I was so excited. I used like little pipe cleaners and little foam balls. And I, I realized after that time, like this is actually my calling. Like my other colleagues, they loved writing and they loved, you know, learning about politics and geography. And I just really wanted to work on our science project. So I think that's where my science love came from. Okay. I, I'm also a bit of a musician myself. So I am curious about your, your uh, musical background as well. Um, you said you still play violin. What what kind of music uh, speaks to you and what do you like to play? I love playing classical music. I'm classically trained. Um, I started working um, on my violin and playing violin when I was about 11 with uh, the Immaculate Conception Symphony Orchestra. 
Then I came to Florida. I worked, I played with the Florida Youth Orchestra for a little bit. Um, I played in high school. Then now in Rochester, I've played with the Brighton Symphony Orchestra, um, which is a wonderful um, organization that I've played with over the years that I've been here as a PhD student. And I've had the opportunity to play with the Rochester Philharmonic side by side. So that was a really fun experience, uh, two years in a row. Um, and I'm really excited about that. Um, but I love classical music. I love anything violin, orchestra related symphony. Mm. And yeah. I, I have a soft spot in my heart for classical too. I grew up with it around the house. Oh, um, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, so talk to me about your time at University of Rochester. I mean, earlier in the interview, you talked about how th this one lab that you took when you were in Florida was really inspiring for you in terms of the neuroscience. Then after you uh, decided that's what you wanted to pursue, um, you know, I know uh, University of Rochester is a very strong neuroscience program, but what was your, what was your time like there as, as a neuroscience student? You know, I started the, so I'm a first generation student. Uh, no one in my family had, in my immediate family has gone to college. So I started U of R. Honestly, I had no idea what to expect. I knew I wanted to get a PhD. I knew it was going to be hard work. And I knew I wanted to do it in, neuro, in neuroscience. Um, but on it, there was, I had no expectation of what to expect or what to do. So I just went in and I was excited. I, was, I knew I was passionate about neuroscience and I went in, I was excited. I had a lot of mentors along the way and advisors that were just very integral to my success. Dr. John Fox, who's the chair, Anya Majewska, who's my advisor and mentor, she has just gone above and beyond to advocate for me, to make sure that I succeed in the lab. Um, and so many other people at NGP have just made, made my success a priority. Um, so I think having those individuals in my corner, a part of my mentor village, as I like to call it, really helped me to get to this point. Um, moving so far away from family, I have never seen snow until I got to Rochester. Um, I think the first time I saw snow was 2015 for the first time. So. And what'd you think? <laughs> um, it was a little um, anticlimactic the first time because we didn't actually have a snowstorm. But I think two years in, we had the official, like, I had to shovel my car and wear snow boots and all of that. So that was a little crazy. It was fun. I, I had a lot of fun. Um, this is something I always like to ask people who are, you know, who come from particularly another country and then come to the U.S. or move from someplace else and come to Rochester. Uh, so you essentially, if my math is right, you basically spent the first half of your life living in Jamaica until the age of 14. So now that you've graduated PhD, I think that's almost exactly half of my math is right. Um, so what, what is, what were, can you kind of compare and contrast the cultures of Jamaica to, to Rochester? How are they different and maybe how are they similar in any, any way? Ooh, that's a very good question. Um, Ooh, <laughs> let me think about that for a second. In terms of similarities, I would say Rochester and Jamaica, the people are fantastic. I have just had a great time meeting new people, trying new experiences. Everyone has been really welcome in all of the circles that I've been in in Rochester. Um, and that's the same way in Jamaica, very open to um, new people and new experiences. Um, in terms of differences, I would say the first time I came here, I went to an all-girls school in Jamaica. So that kind of difference of going from an all-girls school to an American public school in Florida was, was very different. Um, you said to compare it to Rochester. That's a big thing. I would say the food is very different. Have you had a garbage plate? I have had a garbage plate. What's the consensus? <laughs> I think it's good. I actually think it's really great. I love that kind of stuff. It's really fun. Awesome. Uh, one thing I do have to ask you about, um, you know, I mean, especially like I can imagine from your situation coming, you know, from Jamaica, all girls school, then coming to Florida public school where there are uh, boys and girls. Uh, Amer America is kind of a specific high school culture. Um, yeah. Then really going into a field that's been predominantly occupied by white men for a long time. What, yeah. was, what was that experience like? Because I'm sure, you know, I mean, that's, I, I mean, was there any 
Uh, just talk to me about that. I mean, it must, you must have felt like in some ways a sore thumb. I mean, I know you talked about the supportive community, but what was that like kind of going into this environment where no one looked like you and the culture was different? Yeah. So I would say it was a very lonely experience at first, um, especially coming to Florida from that jump to high school. Um, one of the things I've said before is that I wish I had people that looked like me um, that were actually going to pursue a PhD in neuroscience, not only women, because I'm a woman, I'm a black woman, I'm also an immigrant. So having someone that has experienced all of my experiences would be fantastic. Um, but I have found mentors a along the way, outside of Rochester, at Rochester. So I've been able to navigate some of those challenges um, over the years. Has it kind of been, has it ever been like in the back of your mind that you would be the, the first black woman to graduate with a neuroscience degree? Or did that like, did it happen? You're like, oh, cool. Like, what did, were you thinking about it? So I had a feeling there were only a couple of black students, but I had no idea that I was the first black woman until I actually sent a text message to my advisor actually, because I was going to post something on Twitter and just make a, a, a a nice statement and I wanted to make sure and I said Anya am I the first black woman and she's like yeah you are and Nathan was the first black um, man to get a PhD and I was I was actually surprised but I felt really excited at the same time because I made history and that's like like I can never this can never be taken away I'll always have this as being the first black woman to get a PhD from U of R so in neuroscience. <laughs> Yeah, it's still pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Two more things. I mean, I know at, right at the beginning of the interview, I asked you what neuroscience meant, and you said it's very multidisciplinary, uh, and you could do a lot of things with it. What do you want to do with your neuroscience degree? What, what's kind of the career trajectory for you? That's a great question. So in a couple of weeks, I'll be moving on to Stanford to do my postdoc uh, with Dr. Mark Schnitzer. Um, and I plan to work as a principal investigator. That's my ultimate goal. I'd love to understand learning and memory. I'd love to use my knowledge for my PhD looking at glia and understanding the role of glia in the learning and memory processes. So that would be my ultimate goal um, in the next couple of years. Cool. So you said principal investigator. Did I hear that correctly? Yes. Okay. So a researcher, a principal investigator, um, like an advisor. I'd also love to mentor students. That's really important to me. I've spent a lot of my time um, in the PhD program, working with students um, in the lab. I love to teach. I love to help with them getting to their goals. So that is also why I'd like to be a principal investigator. Uh, one more thing before we get to the last part of the interview. Um, yep. For the non-neuroscience informed, can you explain what a glia cell is? Sure. Um, so glia are these really, really fun cells in the brain. Um, they are immune cells. So they are um, they're important for responding to injury and any sort of infarct or anything happening in the brain. That's one of their main roles. But most recently, they've been found to be critical in normal brain function and normal brain development. So they have kind of a dual purpose in the brain. Awesome. So I'd like to end, uh, this is a, I've, I can't, can't believe these words are coming out of my mouth, but I have like a franchise here, which is like one-on-one -on -one where like I do kind of long form interviews uh, with interesting people. I always like to end on three big picture questions. You up for it? Uh, sure. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> uh, I usually frame this question for Rochesterians, but really it's about your hometown. And we touched on this a couple times. Um, but what about your hometown in Jamaica was so important or allowed you to, or gave you something that allowed you to succeed? That's a great question. I would have to say the people, family, family roots, family culture, family, um, just everything about family was what allowed me to be successful. Uh, they pushed me, they encouraged my inquisitive nature, and most importantly, they told me to be fearless, which I think is important in um, jumping into such a big field um, that no one looks like me. So we talked about what you want to do next, being a principal investigator, working with glial cells, mentorship is also important. But if you could accomplish any one thing in your career and have that be like the thing you're known for or the thing you'd most like to accomplish, 
what would that be? Ooh, I, I'd have to give you two things. Um, I'd like to be known for uh, doing rigorous science and exciting science, and also being an advocate for underrepresented groups, um, such as me, like black women who want to pursue PhDs. I'll give you two. <laughs> That's perfect. One last one, I think this kind of ties into this. Um, do you have any advice for someone who wants to be a neuroscientist? Or do you have any advice for uh, a black woman looking to get her PhD? That, yes, I do, actually. Um, I would say, first off, be fearless. And set goals and follow your dreams. And don't be scared to advocate for yourself. And just start each new day. Um, and be passionate about your fields. <laughs> it's kind of all over the place.